Akwaba, welcome to the Minshia Palace and most especially to the Palace Museum. We would like to tell you the story of the Asante people. On the African continent, the Asantes are located in West Africa. They inhabited the central portion of present-day Ghana. This vast tropical forest region was endowed with rich mineral resources with an abundance of gold and timber. Today, Kumasi has become a vibrant urban metropolis with a population of almost 3.5 million. It's the regional capital of the Ashanti region. Trade and business, coupled with its location in terms of transportation, has made it a hub for most businesses. Kumasi can boast of the largest outdoor market in West Africa, with virtually every commodity being traded. This is the Kumasi Central Market at Kejitia. Asantis are a peace-loving nation, but are always ready to fight to defend themselves. They are therefore likened to the porcupine that defends itself with its quills. The war cry of the Asantis is Asante Kotoko, Kumapima, Apimbaba. We are the porcupine warriors. Slay a thousand, and a thousand more will surface to face you. The Asantis were led by their kings, the Asantehenes. These kings were also political and spiritual leaders. Through wars and conquest, the Asantis established a powerful kingdom which covered most of what is present-day Ghana, with its territories stretching deep into present-day Togo and La Côte d'Ivoire. The administrative setup of Asantimang, or the nation of Asante, is like this. The golden stool is the highest authority which unites the people. It is believed to be the soul of the Asante kingdom. The Asantehine, who is the occupant of the golden stool, therefore is accorded the highest honor and respect. He is the head of the Asante nation. Otumfo Osei II, the Asantehine, is a young and dynamic king whose rulership has been characterized by massive development through education. It did not come as a surprise when the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, here in Kumasi, invested in him the highest position of university chancellor. A traditional derber was held in his honor by the chiefs and elders of Asante Main, and this colorful ceremony was attended by the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency President John Ajekum Kufuo. Flanked by academic alumni, the Otumfua was ushered into the ceremony. The cream of Ghana's academia and high-ranking diplomats also attended. Of his uncle, Uhiniba Mensa Bunsu, who had been installed as Hiahini in 1952. His uncle ensured that he benefited from a childhood of careful grooming in Asante traditions and statecraft. Otum Fuwa was said the second style of leadership in Chief DC has won with great admiration from the people of Asante and Ghana in particular and the world in general.
His achievements have also won him many honorary degrees, with one from the Glasgow University, where he was awarded alongside Prince Charles. Otunfo and Asante Mang, in recognition of the services of one of Ghana's illustrious sons to humanity, confer on Kofi Annan, the immediate past General Secretary of the United Nations, the title of Busumru. This title is the name of the highest sword of allegiance in the kingdom. This title can be likened to the highest honor a nation can award to a deserving citizen. His Excellency the Vice President, Alaji Aliu Mahama, graced this occasion with his presence. Sumuru, Kofi Annan. Praise singers or Kwajum Four cannot help but sing of the deeds of this great son of the land. Here, the Asantehima Nana Efia Kobi Ampim II is seen greeting her son, the Otumfu. During such a greeting, the voices of the praise singers are never silent, recounting the greatness and exploits of the king. The Asantehima holds the second highest position in the kingdom. She acts as an advisor to the king in matters of traditional importance. She also has her own court, where arbitration, marital and petty squabbles among the women folk are amicably settled. She is the mobilizing force for the women folk in the kingdom. Despite her age, she's actively involved in all the traditions of the kingdom. In the olden days, she led the women to invoke the ancestral spirit in time of war and victory. Riding in a sedan chair, she gracefully dances to the beat of the drums. It is the matrilineal heritage which gives the person his or her right, status and membership within the lineage. It's the Queen Mother who nominates a king for confirmation when a stool becomes vacant.
after swearing the oath of allegiance with the Mpomponsio sword to Kumasi Mai, or the state of Kumasi, Otumfo goes on to swear to protect the golden stool. When somebody is chosen as a chief in his town, he first swears the oath of allegiance to his people before he swears the oath of allegiance to his superior chief. The Odikro swears the oath of allegiance to the Obrimpong or Omaihine, that's the paramount chief, with a particular state sword. The paramount chief, that's Obrimpong, swears the oath of allegiance to the Asantehine. This is Sikejakofi, the golden stool of Asante Main, the Asante nation. Anoche, the famed priest, invoked the golden stool from the heavens and it gently alighted on the laps of King Oseitutu I, the founder of the Asante nation. This powerful priest in 1695 planted a sword that nobody has been able to uproot to date. Sikajakofi, the golden stool, is the symbolic essence of Asante Mang, the Asante nation, and also the Sum Sum or soul, the embodiment, the continuity and unity of all Asantes. In 1896, the British demanded large indemnity from the Asantes, whom they had defeated in 1874. Prempa I, the 13th Asantehene, was seized when payment was not made. Prempe was imprisoned in the Almina castle for a while. He was then exiled to the Seychelles Islands. In 1900, the British governor, Sir Frederick Hodgson, demanded to be given the golden stool from the Asantes. This perceived insult resulted in the Asantewa War. A brave queen mother led the Asantes in a fierce battle the governor and his entourage in the British garrison Fort St. George were besieged for several months. Some British officers and many Asante warriors were killed and were buried behind the walls of the fort. Yasantua was captured and imprisoned in this cell. She was finally exiled to the Seychelles where she died.